In this example, we have an object with weight given or denoted by W, which is dragged along a horizontal plane by a force acting along a rope attached to, attached to the object. If the rope makes an angle theta with a the plane, then the magnitude of the force is given as mu, where mu is the coefficient of friction, multiplied by the weight of the object, all divided by mu times sine theta plus cosine theta. Okay. And from, so we we'll want to find out for what value of theta is the force the smallest. Okay, so down here is the, um, if you look real right here, this is the figure. Okay, we have the object, which is denoted in blue, and the rope is attached to it. And we want to find the, the value of theta where we get the minimum force, or in other words, the smallest force. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the derivative of our force function with respect to theta, set that equal to zero, okay, and that will give us our critical point, and then we need to figure, we need to uh, verify that this is going to be the smallest value, okay. So for, to do that, we need to use the first derivative test, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, what we can do here is rewrite the original force, okay, in terms of something where we can, uh, and then from there we can take the derivative, okay? So our force is equal to mu times w. This is all getting multiplied by mu times sine theta. Plus cosine theta. So we can rewrite our force, okay, we can write the force as this, okay, just putting the denominator into the numerator. So we, we can take that and raise it all to the negative one. So from here, we're going to go ahead and take the derivative of f with respect to, fa respect to theta. Okay, so we'll bring down the negative one. So we're going to have mu times sine theta plus cosine theta to the negative two. And then we're going to take the derivative of the inside part with respect to theta. Okay, so that's just coming from the uh, we apply the power rule and then uh, and then uh, apply the chain rule. Okay, so we're going to have this is going to be minus mu times w times mu times sine theta plus cosine theta to the negative two, and then we take the derivative of this. This is going to give us uh, mu times cosine theta. minus sine theta. Okay, let's rewrite this. This is the same as minus mu times w. And that's gonna get, that's gonna be uh, multiplied by mu times cosine theta minus sine theta. And all this is divided by mu times sine theta plus cosine theta squared. All right. So now we need to set this equal to zero, okay? All right, so we need to find our critical, our critical value. All right, so, Solving this is basically um, just solving for uh, this component, okay? Right, this, we want to set that equal to zero, okay? Because mu and w are constants, and then the denominator doesn't, uh, well, denominator, if you multiply both sides of this by the denominator, then you, you're left with, uh, you're just left with what you see in yellow here, okay, in, in the yellow box, okay? All right, so we have mu 
times cosine theta minus sine theta equals to zero. All right, so now, okay, what we can do is we want to, so we want to find the value of theta. So we need to isolate theta. Okay, so we can, uh, so from here we can get mu cosine theta equals to sine theta. And then we can go ahead and divide both sides by sine. So we're going to get, uh, so this is the same as, let's see, I'll do it down here. So yeah, we can divide, actually we, yeah, we want to divide everything by cosine theta. So we're going to get Yep, so we can isolate mu. So mu is going to be equal to sine theta over cosine theta, and that is equal to tangent theta. Okay. All right, so we have that mu is equal to tangent theta, and that is the same thing as tangent inverse of mu equals to theta. So we just take tangent inverse of both sides. And so what happens on the right hand side that will isolate theta, okay? So we have theta now in terms of mu, okay? In terms of our coefficient of friction, okay? Okay, so now uh, we need to determine, we need to uh, determine whether this is a relative minimum or relative maximum, okay? So remember in the problem, okay, we're asked for what value of theta is the function the smallest, okay? All right, so we need to, so at this point, we're not sure yet if this is, if this is the optimal, if this is the, if this is, if this will provide the smallest force, okay? So we need to apply the first derivative test, okay? Okay. All right. So I'm going to draw the number line here. In this case, okay, if we're going back, if we go back up here, uh, you can see um, theta is going from 0 to 90. Okay. So what I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to draw it this way. Okay, so this will be zero. This is going to be 90 degrees, okay? And somewhere here is tangent inverse of u. Of, uh, tangent inverse of u. Okay. All right. So we need to figure out, okay, we need to uh, determine what's happening between, in terms of this, of the signs, we need to see whether, uh, what's happening between zero and tangent inverse of u and uh, between tangent inverse of u and 90 degrees, okay. So we don't have a specific critical number here, right, it's, it's not a, it's not, it's given in general form. So what we need to do is we need to go back to the original derivative and use some logic here. Okay, so, uh, it, so basically looking at our original derivative, okay, which is, right, which is this part here, okay, all right, all this here, okay, um, well, that's the equation, so it's just basically this part, okay, that we want to see, okay. All right, so we're gonna, so that's, that was the first derivative, okay? Um, 
we don't need to be considered with a denominator here because that's squared. Okay, that's always going to be positive. And the mu w, remember mu is the coefficient of friction, that's always going to be positive. And w, right, w was the weight, that is going to be positive. So ideally, we should look at, okay, we're going to look at the uh, minus mu times cosine theta plus sine theta, okay? Okay, again, that's up here, okay? So I went ahead and included the negative, okay? But not included the mu and w. And again, we don't need the denominator uh, because that's always going to be positive, okay? So we need to see what's happening with this part, right? We need to see what's happening in the, in, with this part of the uh, derivative, okay? In order to figure out, um, you know, the you know, to figure out which, uh, whether we have a positive or a negative, uh, you know, between zero and tangent inverse of u and between tangent inverse u and 90, de and 90 degrees. All right. So from here, um, we can go ahead and we can start our analysis. Okay. All right. So if, okay, so looking at just this portion, Okay, so if right, so if this is positive, okay, all right. So again, going back up here, right? If that is positive, then that means okay, we want to figure out what is that in turn. What's that going to tell us? Okay, all right. So. We can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and expand on this. Okay, so this is the same as minus mu times cosine theta, and that's going to be greater than minus sine theta. Okay, and then from here we can divide both sides by. Uh, we can go ahead and divide both sides by a negative. Okay, so this is going to give us mu times cosine theta less than sine theta so we have to we have to uh, change the uh, switch the inequality sign and then from there uh, we can go ahead and uh, divide both sides by uh, cosine okay. so this is the same as okay Again, just divide by both sides by cosine theta. And then from here, this is the same as tangent inverse of mu. And that's going to be less than theta. Okay. And so this tangent inverse of mu less than theta, that is the same as saying theta is bigger than the tangent inverse of mu. Okay. So let's go back. All right. All right. So what this says is that, okay. All right. So if, okay. So if minus mu cosine theta plus sine theta is bigger than zero. Okay. So let's go back to the original derivative here. Okay. So if that, that's the part Okay, so if you look in the in our derivative, the the one with the rectangle, okay, and we include the negative sign. Okay, so that means if this is positive, okay. All right, so if that's positive, that's giving us a positive value. When that's going to be positive when theta is strictly bigger than tangent inverse of u, so that tells us that it must be positive here. Okay, right? Remember, this is a number line for theta. And so if that's, if from what we start out with, okay, we basically use logic, okay? So we basically set up the inequality and show that if this, right, if this statement, okay, right, from here, we assumed this, 
and then show that that must occur when theta is bigger than tangent inverse of, u, of mu. Okay. So that means what you see here in the green in the in the green here, okay, that is means that the derivative will be positive. Okay. All right. Because again, the denominator is positive and mu and w are positive. Okay. All right, so that means we have it's going to be positive between tangent inverse of u and 90 degrees. Okay. Now we got to consider what happens if it's not positive. Okay. So what if it's going to be negative? So same statement, okay. Same same expression here, but except we want to see what happens when it's negative. Okay. Alright, so in that case we're gonna go through the same thing. We need to um, we need to see, okay what theta is in terms of how or how it compares to tangent in to the tangent inverse of mu. Okay, so we're gonna get minus mu cosine theta. Okay, and that's gonna be less than negative sine theta. Okay. So divided by negative, uh, this is the same as mu cosine theta greater than sine theta, okay? And so this, again, we can isolate mu by taking the um, sine, by dividing both sides by sine theta, okay? Or not sine theta, I'm sorry, divide both sides by uh, cosine theta, sorry. So you're gonna get mu is going to be bigger than, okay, tangent theta, all right? So again, divide both sides by uh, cosine theta, just what we did up here. Okay, same thing down here. All right. So now uh, we have mu is bigger than tangent theta, so that would mean um, if we take tangent inverse of both sides, okay, we would get tangent inverse of mu is bigger than theta. And so that would imply that theta is smaller than tangent inverse of mu, okay? All right, so again, looking in the green, right? Looking in the green, looking in the green box here. So that that's gonna be when the derivative is negative, okay? So that will occur when theta is less than tangent inverse of mu. So going back up to our number line, so this means it's gonna be negative. Okay, so this means that the function, right, the function that we are given up here for the force is going to be decreasing between zero and tangent inverse of mu, and it's gonna be increasing uh, between tangent inverse mu and 90 degrees. So we can conclude that, okay, that the Tangent inverse of, u, of mu is the uh, is a relative minimum, okay, or a relative minimum occurs there, okay. So relative minimum occurs at theta equals to tangent inverse of mu, okay? All right, so that is the value of theta, okay? That is the value of theta will, that will give us the um, smallest force, okay? All right. So again, um, typical optimization problem where you have to, you know, we take the derivative of the function, set that equal to zero, and then we have to, uh, and then we, and then we find the critical value, and then we have to use, we have to apply the first derivative test to determine whether that, you know, determine whether those critical numbers are relative minimum or relative max values. In this case, we only get one critical number, and then we have to use a little bit of logic here, okay, uh, to figure out 
um, you know, to figure out whether our critical number is a relative min or relative max. Okay, and it turns out that it is a relative minimum, which is what we're finding. Okay, which is what we want. Okay.